Welcome again to the wrestling podcast of the Hobo and His Girlfriend. My name is Hobo Tom. And with this with this YouTube cast, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Also send an email. I'm wearing my glasses or in this video kind of funny. And I see the screen in my eyes. This kind of reflects. But this has been a kind of wonky week. Again, it is Thursday. And I very rarely promote products. But whenever anything says Lord Hobo Brewing and Hobo Life, yes. Ah, good. Well, let's talk some wrestling. Let's talk about Raw. Weird show. The opening was okay. Ember Moon does not look comfortable on the ladder. So she's not winning. And again, I've put my predictions up with my girlfriend. My girlfriend right now is asleep. We went to the beach, had some fishing. Okay, I have to catch dinner somehow. And she's exhausted. She went to bed. So it's just me. But again, please like and subscribe. And if you click on the share or like or click on for notifications you know i do try to put at least one video up a week this this is my third video this week Woohoo! and i think in about 30 more days i've cleared my punishment live stream yes but again let's talk about raw again it was, it was kind of okay it was a weird show it was like being bookend did two great matches, one in the end, one in the beginning, everything else in the middle. Yeah, and unlike Bobo Life Beer, which is good throughout. So we had the kind of opening segment, and they copied this from last last year or a couple years ago. It seemed more original and organic then. It was okay. All the raw participants were on ladders talking, yap, 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 whatever. The first match we had was Natalia versus Sasha Banks versus Ember Moon versus Alexa Bliss. And I was kind of shocked. Not great, only because it's kind of a smosh match. But... A cheeseburger! These burgers magically appear due to the pr production capacity of the hobo and his girlfriend, or hobo production. These burgers getting a little beat up, but yeah, this was a cheeseburger match. Every woman kind of got their spots in. It was kind of good action throughout. Nothing really special. I was, however, shocked. Alexa Bliss did hit a Canadian destroyer. And it was a typical spot fest. Yeah, it was okay. It was good. It was fun, enjoyable. Again, this is fun, enjoyable. It gets a cheeseburger. And this led to KO in the back, just kind of stirring up things. Again, trying to get it to be a three on one. Then the next match, Brazango versus Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. This is really a piece of toast match. Ugh. I mean, it was a semi-squash match. It's even good. Whatever it was, it was. Again, if you disagree with a hobo in his comments, or like the machine gun Carl Anderson shirt I'm wearing, please feel free to leave a comment or even email. Uh, this led to Reigns versus Ginger Mahal. But no! It was Sunil Singh's. This was a can of soup match. Once you knew Sunil Singh was going to win, you know it's going to be a squash match. <laughs> One of these days, Singh's going to turn on to Ginger Mahal. Ginger Mahal isn't winning. You hit the cloth on Roman Reigns. The math says you stand tall at the go-home show. Not winning. 
It didn't kind of soup. It is what it was. Kind of knew what was going to happen. After this, it was the B team versus Slater and Rhino. Not another soup match. I mean, at least there was a good back and forth. But you know the B team was going to go over. Can of soup. But again, good at the beginning. You haven't gotten to the end yet. But everything else in the middle. Again, comment if you disagree with me. This is pro wrestling we're talking about, not politics. Um, now you have Elias running down Seth Rollins. Again, you have uh, KO versus Bobby Roode. Or, or KO and Bobby Roode little thing in the back. This was good because this actually shows Bobby Roode actually practicing how to smile because he seems to smile way too much. He's the happy Bobby Roode, the happy face Bobby Roode. I want to see heel Bobby Roode wearing the suits, bringing in the executives or bringing in hobos. Yes. And then we have the Bailey versus Ruby Riot. Match the riot squads now just being like vandals. I think they're channeling the inner workings of the N N NWO or live. There we go. This was okay. I mean, it was a little good back and forth. I mean, Ruby Riot won, and it's this. This isn't a cheeseburger. This is a ham sandwich. This was a ham sandwich match. And then Ruby Riot versus Mike Cat could be a ham sandwich match. Again, it was okay. Then they spray painted. Oh no, marker heard up. Again, kind of the introduction. They have him come going in the back to cut some guy's tie. NWO ish. Yeah. Then you have Nia Jax and Ronda Rousey kind of interview. I'm getting bored of these. It's the same old, same old. Whatever it was. Then you have Kurt Hawkins versus. No way. Jose. No way. Jose. This was kind of fun. And it, it shows Kurt Hawkins' desperation because now he snuck in with the conga line. No way Jose makes his entrance with a conga line. Doing all their conga dances. They hit the music for Kurt Hawkins. The wood shows up. Ref starts. One. Two. For the ten count. Ten. But then, ah, uh -uh, Not going to happen because in the conga line was a disguised Kurt Hawkins. And he tried to sneak attack. No way Jose get his first win. But it did not work. Kurt Hawkins instead got a ham sandwich. Actually, Kurt Hawkins lost. Now he's done, now he's lost 201, I think, straight matches. It was okay. Ham sandwich. Then you have... Rude and Finn Blor are talking about how they've been approached by Kevin Owens. Again, it's okay. At least it leads up to things. And that's purpose. Time Museum versus Bobby Lashley. Obstacle course. What is this? Like the Tough Enough NXT Challenge? It was okay, I guess. It was better than him than Sami Zayn just trying to be funny. Of course, Sami Zayn jumped them. As he as Bobby Lashley rang the bells, climbing down from the rope, started to do a rope swing. It does. I'll, I'll give him this. At least Sami Zayn seems to be enjoying it with himself. So then the, again, this led to the, the the bookend match. We had the the cheeseburger beginning match. Wait a second. Did I invoke a cheeseburger? So we have a cheeseburger match. Beginning, one day I'll have some production money, and here you had a surf and turf match. Surf and turf trumps cheeseburger. 
Again, this was a really fun match. It was Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor versus Bobby, Bobby Roode versus Braun Strowman. And it was fun. I, at first, Kevin Owens, Finn, and Bobby, they tried to all take Braun on individually in a work. So again, they figured out, hey, we need to team up on them. So for three on one, um, eventually they all, it was fun though. Um, they got to the, they got to the stage area. Braun Strowman set I just set up the table, warning Braun Strowman, you set up the table, you go through the table. WWE math for you. Instead, uh, Bobby Roode and Finn Balor, I beat him up, placed him on the table. Kevin Owens took out a ladder, frog splashed him, flew the table, and really fun. Then this led to a good kind of kind of three-way match between Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Bobby Roode. For a while, it was just Bobby Roode and Finn Balor because Kevin Owens was just kind of knocked knocked about. So the frog splash, and it was fun. It was good. Towards the end, all three of them, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Bobby Roode, all hit their finisher on him. Braun Adam got back up, drove Kevin Owens in the running power slam into a ladder. Braun Strowman wins. It was fun. I can't complain. So that's really it for Raw. I mean, again, if you have something to say, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Past videos, I had a little bonus section about my Lucha Nachos. It is Lucha season again. Lucha, Lucha. And that's it for all. So now that Raw is done, let's get to the real show. Again, start off some good old-fashioned hobo life here. Pretty good stuff. Worth every one of the pieces of aluminum I clipped for. So SmackDown, this was this was just more entertaining. It was fun. It was quick too. Well, maybe not quick, but they gave the wrestling matches. They had time to breathe. Not a lot of filler stuff. It was good. Page opens up with Lana, Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair in the ring. Naomi has her boobies showing. <laughs> and Becky Lynch has to learn how to zip up. For some reason, the bottoms on Charlotte were kind of low. But... It was fun. And you had Lana with her Lana. Lana number one. Lana. Happy Lana Day. Again, to everyone out there, happy Rusev Day. I am Hobo Tom. Like, share, and subscribe, please. And leave a Gmail. I'm leaving an email at Gmail. I love. At Hobo and Girlfriend at gmail.com. And then you had the iconic duo. And they were just running down the four women in the win ring. It was so funny. They even did the kid and play dance. That gets a men honorable mention. But it was fun. Then the other two losers of Mandy Rose and Boo DeVille, Sonya DeVille. Came out, started a brawl, eventually cleared things out. This was our first match, but this was this was good. This kind of went quick. Well, maybe not quick, but it just felt the right time. And SmackDown has the timing down to a T. So Brian, Daniel Bryan versus Shelton Benjamin. Again, this was a surf and turf and match. This was good. It was good throughout. Unlike Raw, which has good points that leave you up here, leave you very happy. But then all of a sudden, it brings you back down. It's like, eh. 
but yeah, the Shelton Benjamin match, a surf and surf match. This this could have highlighted most pay per views, or at least been the opener for most pay per views. Good technical wrestling, very good British style wrestling. This is fun. Oh, just one quick shout out to Simon Miller. I think there was a there's a sign. I mean, this might be a silly point on my part, but the one they have signs. This is kind of funny. I should make a hobo Tom sign. Sneak that on air. <laughs> Self promotion. But it says why. It was said why in one sign. And. Here's why. That's it. That was that was the second sign. I'm sorry, it took, it took me a couple minutes. So shout out to Simon Miller. I think he's having his second pro wrestling match across the pond in Great Britain. Again, good luck to you. Again, anyone who can do pro wrestling, it's not for everyone. I dabble in it just really a little bit. And very realized quickly after I had bruises from ropes that and trying to actually finish up some edu- some form of education that, nah, not for me. It would be fun to get back in the ring and just kind of run the ropes, do, do the moon salt again, the hobo salt. Ooh. Then you had Jerry the King Lawler come out in an interview. This was fun. It was good. Again, they have the silly signs out there. I forgot even what this sign is, and I can barely read my handwriting, but it was just some silly sign. And then being in Memphis, of course, you're going to have Jerry the King Lawler. Oh, the other thing, they seem to be doing SmackDown in small arenas because the ramp doesn't look like a ramp. It just looks like kind of a floor with, like, risers. It looks like, like, real minor league hockey arenas. But it is what it was. And then we had our Rusev versus Samoa Joe match with Miz as a guest referee. Again, this was a surf and turf match. I'm kind of tempted to say it's a steak dinner, but it's not quite the filet mignon of my rating system, which one day I will post again. Again, filet mignon is the highest most satisfying meal you could ever have as a hobo or as a piece of toast the lowest toast is what you have when you're sick everything else kind of falls somewhere in the middle and again I'll explain that again I should explain that more often but again this was good I mean the Miz is actually really good as a ref he knows the ref's cadence he knows the rules, he knows how to back people down. One, two, three, four. Like he's like, Duh, I will disqualify you. You listen to me at all times. And he was really good in the match. Mm. There was even the classic ref spot with the Miz, and the Miz ate it like, like a champ, and it was really fun. And that, again, the only reason why it's a surf and turf, just the Miz's antics might have taken away a tiny bit from the match between Rusev and Samoa Joe. Because, again, it was a great match. It was a great hard-hitting, hard really striking-based match. And it was really fun. Those two worked great together. And Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe, he's great. Rusev's Darn good, too. You ride in the tank for WrestleMania, you're going to be good. Or at least someone thinks you're really good. Then you had your classic ref spot. <laughs> I think Samoa Joe went to splash Rusev. Miz got in the way, so Miz ate the splash. Miz says, you can't put your hands on me. Joe shoved him. Miz shoved him back, I think. And then in a mosh kick. And it was a one, two, three. With a quick count, Rusev wins. Miz hits a skull finale on Rusev. Climbs up the ladder. 
gets the money in the bank, briefcase, and says, I have here a contract. Opens it up. Pancakes! Oh, that's right. Some other doofus had a sign for IHOB, International House of Burgers. Say pancakes. Say breakfast. Breakfast, bueno. I learned that from Hobo. El Hobo. Dos Vegabundos. Tres Tomaso. Whom I properly placed and kicked him out of my territory a couple days ago. Then he was shouting out Spanish words. I fear I just make it up. This led to a Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And really, I mean, besides the end, I hate doing this, but it was what it was. The cheeseburger. The only reason it was a cheeseburger match, Jeff Hardy won, he retained because he got low blowed by Shinsuke Nakamura. It was really good. There were delete chants. I mean, the crowd was hot. Really, it was a classic Jeff Hardy match. I mean, just fun. And again, because of the match, I don't think Nakamura's winning. He stood tall. I mean, he got his, he got his licks in on Jeff Hardy. Got Jeff Hardy. Thankfully, he's wearing those big baggy pants. Probably wearing some knee brace. Because he's not moving around as well as he do. Which, I mean, granted... He moves around 20 times better than I do, so instead of being 100%, he's probably 90%. This 90% is better than my 2,000. So again, it was, it was fun. This led to the 10, 10 women tag team match, because eventually Asuka got added into all the winner's sides, and Carmella got added into all the loser sides. And it was, it was okay. I, the thing SmackDown has a real problem with and struggles is the timing of things. Because I watched the clock and I'm like, oh, they're going to get this half hour. Good. Said be after the intros and commercials and all the stuff that must drive the live crowd crazy, they only wrestled for 15 minutes. And like 10 women, it's like, no, nah, this should be a good half hour at least. So, so again, the timing was, was kind of wonky. So you had Asuka and Becky Lynch and Naomi and Charlotte Flair and Lana versus Mandy Rose, Sonya the Pood, Sonya the Ville, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, and Carmella. And Peyton Royce has really skinny legs. My girlfriend's asleep, so. But it was okay. And it just seemed like they were going to go, and then all of a sudden, it's like, ah. Good thing about this. They had a lot of flippy stuff. And I am 100% okay with flippy stuff. I know other people don't like it. I love it. It showcases athleticism. I think and Lana should give me some credit but she has the Machka Breaker which is kind of her version of the Neck Breaker I guess yeah it was really good I do like Becky Lynch two piece outfit better though uh oh who's this are you visiting me uh oh she just wants to take a nap in her bed. My kitty cat back. She's made an appearance a couple times and might make an appearance tonight. We'll see. Again, Billy Kay, very good in ring talker. Peyton Roy is a very good in ring talker. Carmella, excellent in ring talker. Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville have good promos, but not but not good in, in, in ring trash talking. I think Mandy Rose also cut herself on her forearm or something. Or, or something to that effect. It just seemed really quick. And 
I mean that I mean that's the reason why I'm like well, well a men's match from Raw. It's good, but it's still only a cheeseburger. I mean SmackDown could have been so much better if they gave him time. Cause here what do you say, Cheespa? No, they should get more time too. Okay, say hello to everyone. Okay. Get down. And treats me like a hobo anyway. But again, that was SmackDown. It was kind of fun. A lot better than Raw was. Again, I already have my Money in the Bank predictions up. Oh, please watch that. Leave a comment. Feel free to disagree. Also, email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Enjoy your Thirsty Thursday, folks. It will be Red Wine and Pizza Friday soon. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.